Hello, this is Chi Hong Yun from the University of Hong Kong. Today, I'll present my paper, Dual Ring, Generic Construction of Ring Signatures with Efficient Instantiations. This is a joint work with Mohammed Atin, Joseph Liu from Monash University, and Cicero Data61 from Australia, and Meng Ho Ao from the University of Hong Kong, and Ji Ming Ding from Wise University in the USA. In this presentation, I will first give a very brief introduction about ring signature, then I will give our construction of our scheme, dual ring, and then I will give two instantiations, one in the elliptic curve setting and the other one in the lattice space setting. And finally, I'll give some conclusion. So firstly, let me have a very brief introduction about what is a ring signature. So um, in a standard digital signature, one signer will output one single signature and everybody can check that this signature is really come from Alice, the actual signer. But ring signature is something different that wants to provide anonymity to the actual signer. They can do so by adding some kind of decoy proper keys collected from um, other parties. And then they will jointly form something like a ring and then generate one signature output in a way that it will hide the sender, the actual identity of the actual signer. And then, um, so from the receiver Bob's point of view, um, it cannot see whether this is the signature output from Alice or all other decoys. So one of the most important property of ring signature is to hide your region. Of course, it has to sets also satisfy the probability of unforgeability as well. So anonymity or uh, unforgeability, they are um, the two most important properties of a ring signature scheme. Why this kind of signature is called ring signature? This is mainly because of the first few um, construction of ring signature in um, issue 2, 2001 and 2002. So um, I'll briefly um, review it because our scheme is highly related to this one. Let's recall um, one of the fundamental building block of a classical ring signature. So um, it is called a type T or free move signature scheme. And one classical example is the Snor signature. So a Snor signature or a free move signature, they consist of three steps. One, the first one is a commitment steps, which outputs a commitment value, capital R. And then a hash function will apply onto the message together with the uh, commitment, output a challenge. And then finally, there is a response function Z, which outputs a response, um, small set is equal, for example, in the small case, is equal to R plus CSK. So it is a function on the randomness, challenge, and the secret key. And finally, in order to verify this type T signature, um, there is a verification function B, which reconstructs R from Z, Z, and of course the proper key. And then we want the hash function to check if the C value, the challenge value is correct. In the small case, the commitment value R is reconstructed in this equation and then use it on, uh, on the hash function to compute the challenge values back and check whether the C is equal to the C in the signature. So this is a um, classical type T signatures. Um, there's no um, GQ and many, many other forms of uh, type T signatures in the literature. So let's see how an AOS ring signature is constructed. So assume that we have um, Alice, the actual signer there in the index J, and that all other decoys are located in different positions in this ring. So Alice, the signer, picks a random RJ, small RJ, to generate the commitment, capital RJ, uh, through the commitment function A first, as shown in this diagram. And then the signer uses RJ and to compute the next challenge is cj plus one through the hash function. So hash the message together with the um, commitment and then it computes the next challenge values. And then from the challenge, and then we go to the index j plus one. For this step, this is the decoy where Alice does not know the secret key, but she can pick a random response set and then to reconstruct the commitment out through the verification function V there. And then it will generate the next one, the C J plus two, the next, uh, and then it will generate the next commitment, RJ plus one, and then by the RJ plus one, 
he can compute the um, CJ plus two through the hash function and so on and so forth. And then after J plus one, go to J plus two and then up all the way up to N and then go back to index one and then all the way up to the index J minus one. So a ring is then formed sequentially. So you can see that why this type of signature is called ring signature in the first place. So the last step is to close this ring. So the last step, we have um, the commitment RJ plus one, and then through the hash function, we have the commitment, uh, the challenge CJ. And then finally, the last step is to compute ZJ by the response function and using the secret key of Alice, SKJ there. So the ring is completed and the signature is C1, Z1 up to ZN. So this is the final signatures. And in order to verify, then this is very simple because you can see that this ring is formed by some perfectly um, computable function V and H. So um, the verifier can simply run through this ring again and then complete the checking. So this is um, why this type of signature is called ring signature. But later on, we find out that this type of ring signature is not efficient because you can see that the signature size is n plus one elements there. So it is a O n and it is not efficient. So um, later on, um, in the last two decades, um, researchers, they want to find out if we can improve the efficiency of ring signature schemes. And we find out a lot of different construction using different primitives in um, cryptography, including um, using cryptographic accumulator. So the advantage of this approach is that it can output some constant size signature, but um, in the RSA or pairing-based setting, but it requires the use of a trusted setup. Um, recently, um, uh, there are some lattice space accumulator without using some trust to set up, but it will result in a rather large signatures, maybe several megabytes. So if we do not want to um, use the trust to set up, then um, you suggest to use the zero knowledge proof based approach, which will give an O log N size ring signature, where N is the number of proper keys in the ring. And in, um, in the state of the art, in this approach, um, most of the paper, they will use the technique called the one out of many proof or the bulletproof approach, um, including the discrete law based construction in um, GK15 in Eurocrypt 2015, or the latex based approach um, in the crypto 2019. Um, uh, this paper is also um, written by two of my co-authors. So um, we also summarize all of the existing construction here in this table. So um, the research question is whether we can do better. So let's have a look in the DL based construction. We can see that in the last few years, um, from 2015 to 2020, we can see a lot of improvement in terms of um, proving, uh, pushing the boundaries from four log n, five log n elements to two log n elements in both CCS19 and FC 2020. And um, this FC paper is also written by myself and together with some of the co-authors in this paper as well. So um, we, we push the uh, signature size to a rather low level and it is O log N size for the latex based construction. Also for the DL based construction. For the latex based construction, um, we have the, um, um, uh, the O N size signature, ring signature in ACNS 2019, but it is, becomes very impractical when the ring size becomes large. And the breakthroughs come from the um, CCS19 as well as the Asia Crypt 20 paper. Um, they give an O log N size ring signature. And they are already quite practical, but uh, for a ring size of like run to 1000 to 4000. Um, but the question is, okay, can we do better, um, give a better construction in both DL base and latex space setting in one single construction. It is mainly because um, you can see that these two uh, tables, you can see that the papers are different. So they use a little bit different approach to construct. And one unique contribution about this paper is that we give a generic construction using the classical ring approach, which haven't been used for a pretty long time. And when it is instantiated in the DL base or lattice space setting, it will give one of the shortest ring signature scheme in uh, DL base, 
and also in the lattice space. Um, for the lattice space schemes, um, we still have the um, ON size ring signature. So um, our ring signature is shorter for a ring size of maybe less than um, 1,000, but um, for large ring size, then the OLOG N size ring signature schemes are still better. So this is our main contribution. So let's have a look um, into high level idea of our construction and why our paper is called Dury. And the overview is that um, actually we try to revisit the classical ring approach and we find out some solution to make it shorter, that is OLOG N size in the DL based setting. Um, when we think about what is the construction of the um, classical ring approach, the difficulty to further complex it is it's mainly because they, in, um, they include the hash function in the ring structure. And when we instantiate those hash functions, then we usually use those um, like SHA2. And then it is very difficult to put it in a zero knowledge proof to further compress it. So our very um, high level idea to form a construction is that we try to remove the hash function out of the ring and try to form a ring with a very simple algebraic structure. And that's why we can further compress it um, using some zero knowledge proof. And we, why we want to keep the classical ring approach is that the ring structure itself already provides certain level of anonymity, just like the um, issue group 01 and 02 paper. And we want to build a very simple algebraic operation like addition or multiplication to allow compression in the ring. So um, our construction consists of two rings, a ring of commitments and a ring of challenges. And these two rings are linked by a hash function. So this is a very high level overview. And our construction, we also need something very similar to a type T um, signature. But um, actually we need something a little bit different. We call the type T star canonical identification. And um, why we call, uh, what is the difference? So we roughly talk about it below. So firstly, we require that the verified function V um, originally is a function on P, K, C, and Z. Actually, we require that this function can be separated into two parts, V1 set multiplied by V2 P, K, C. So we find out that this type of structure um, satisfied most of the um, construction we know in the free move setting. Like this North signature one, you can see that um, the commitment value R is computed from a function of Z and a function of P, K, and C. So this is a V1, and um, this, the second part is the V2. And um, we also require that V1 is homomorphic either additive or multiplicative. And then um, given the S, K, and C, there exists a function T, which um, on input at S, K, and C output Z prime, such that V, K, Z prime is equal to um, V2, P, K, C. And then we also require that this change space is a group. It is satisfied in most setting. And we also require that um, the canonical identification has a special soundness in the DL based setting. So um, we found that most of the scheme we know is um, actually um, satisfy this property like the Schnorr identification, the identification scheme from the Cas1 signature, the trump patterson identification, or the Okamoto Schnorr, and as well as the GQ identification in the RSA-based setting. We also find out that the lattice-based identification from the Fiat-Shamir with a broad approach, they also satisfy this setting. But um, for the latex space setting, um, the special science definition does not directly apply to that because um, there exists something we call the uh, knowledge gap, such that the, um, the witness extracted from the two transcripts is not identical to the original one. Therefore, we need to uh, modify the definition for the special science a little bit um, for the latex space setting. In our paper, in the, um, in the conference, version and we use the notion called the special impersonation. That is a combination of special signers together with the impersonation for canonical identification in order to deal with this issue. So we uh, add a new notion, security notion there. So this is a new building block. And then let's look into the construction. 
So we have, remember, we have two rates, the R rate, the commitment rate, and the C rate, the challenge rate. And we use the same setting. The actual sign of Alice uh, is at the position J there. So in, to start this one, firstly, Alice sign up picks um, the small LJ, the randomness. And then the signer um, picks the random challenges C1, um, C1 up to CN except CJ. So they will pick all other random C there. And then um, Alice will form an R ring together in one single step by a computation of you can, uh, this, following this equation, R is equal to ALJ times um, V2, PKJ plus one, CJ plus one, all the way up to V2, PK, and CN multiplied to PK, uh, V2, PK1, C1, all the way up to V2, PKJ minus one, CJ minus one. So one single computation will complete this R ring. Then um, we have a commitment R using the V2 function. And then we use this R to compute the challenge. It's equal to the hash of R, the set of all public keys, and the message M. Next is to form a C ring by a simple computation. For example, we want to compute CJ that satisfies this relation. C is equal to C1 times G2 all the way times CN. So assume that um, this, um, this symbol is the inverse of the, multipl the multiplication sign there. So we have the um, C, after the hash function, we have the capital, uh, sorry, the small C there. And then we divide by CJ minus one, divide by CJ minus two up to CN, and then divide by C1, divide by C2 all the way, divide up to CJ minus one, then we recover CJ. And then the last step is to use this CJ to form the small Z. And this small set is computed by the capital set, the response function. So you can see that the signature here now is a little bit different. It's one single response together with n challenges. So this is a small set, C1 up to CN. We call that in the AOS construction. This is one challenge and n response. This one is one response and and challenges. So remember this one. This um this difference is quite uh, important for our lattice space construction. So how to verify? For the verification, actually the R is reconstructed from the V1 function and the V2 function. Um, the V1 function is onto the single response Z, and the V2 function is on all proper keys and all challenges. And then finally, uh, we use the um, hash function to check whether the C value is correct or not by this equation. So this is the high level overview of our dual array. And we prove the security of our scheme. Um, firstly, uh, we show that the anonymity um, is actually provided by the ring structure in the random oracle model. Um, it is quite similar to the, um, uh, the AsiaCrypt 01 and 02 paper. Um, by the ring structure, actually, no matter where the um, the Alice, the signer start, um, she can be in the position J, position one, position two. It doesn't matter. It um, it is uh, the no one is able to determine whether she, um, which location she is. And for unforgeability, actually, our paper reduced the security of this type T star identification. Is reduced to this one in the random oracle model. That means that um, if there is an adversary that can forge this during, then it can um, break the um, security um, of the underlying identification schemes in the random oracle model. So once we have the um, during, um, then it's not very difficult to get the ECC base as well as the lattice space construction. So remember that um, our signature, the dual ring, the generic construction actually gives a O-N size generic ring signature. Um, consists of one response and N challenges. But we know that by applying a suitable instantiation and a suitable seal knowledge proof, it is not difficult to compress it to a O log N size proof using the recent advance in the seal knowledge proof system. In the DR base setting, 
um, actually the the relationship between C and C1 up to Cn is following this addition relation. So C is equal to C1 at C2 on the all the way up to Cn more P. And then we in this paper, we propose a non-interactive sum argument of knowledge, we call the NISK, to compress this C1 up to Cn using a zero knowledge proof system. Actually, this construction is quite similar to the bulletproof um, for inner product relation. Actually, um, you can see that this one is a simplified version of an inner product relation. This is a inner product of this challenge vector multiplies a one vector, and it is equal to the perfect value C. So we can simplify the bulletproof, and then um, this is shown in the diagram on the right hand side, but I will not um, go into the uh, details. Um, but um, we can see that um, actually um, because of this simplified relation, our uh, NISA actually saved about half of the computation in the bulletproof system due to us, the simplicity of this relation. By combining during with the NISA, and then um, we also need to um, move the parameters a little bit, swap a little bit, and then um, we can give our construction of the ECC-based during. We call it during EC. And, um, and we also implemented it and uh, we compare them uh, with our signature size with some of the existing schemes. Uh, we can see that um, our scheme is actually um, the shortest one for ordering size. And we implement our running time in, the, uh, in a map book um, using Python. And then um, the running time shows that for a ring size up to 1,000, then um, the, the signing time is a little bit slower, like 10 seconds, but it's still acceptable. And the verification time is somewhere between um, 2.5, around 2.5 seconds. And if someone can optimize it, like using C and uh, fast libraries, perhaps um, we can still um, have a shorter verification time. And our scheme is quite practical in that sense. So that summarizes our elliptic curve based construction. For the lattice based setting, uh, remember that um, our scheme uh, is O log O n size in the um, generic construction. And unlike the elliptic curve based construction, um, there are no very efficient or highly efficient CK proof um, in the lattice based setting that we can use. But interestingly, um, our scheme is already highly efficient in the lattice based setting. It's mainly because our scheme consists of one single response and n challenges. And we know that the challenge, the size of challenge in the lattice space schemes are rather small, like 256 bits, as compared to the size of a response in the lattice space setting, which is usually at least a few kilobytes. So we can um, see that we need, only need one response and n very small challenges. So um, we obtain a very complex lattice space ring signature even without requiring a lattice space sum argument. And we give our um, type T canonical identification um, from the lattice space setting using the um, rejection sampling technique. And um, we will give our concrete uh, parameter setting uh, in the paper, but um, the results are summarized below. Uh, our scheme is the shortest one for a ring size between 4 to 1,946. Uh, 1, um, we believe that it is quite useful in practice, for example, the ring size of a Monero, um, because a, a ring size of a million ring members is not practical because you also need to send all 1 million proper keys of the ring members. So it is not practical to have this. Uh, extremely large ring size. So we believe that something around 1,000 is uh, more reasonable in that sense. So um, this is the contribution of our paper, although our paper is um, all n size in the lattice space construction. Our ring size, our, our signature is still quite small. And we also noticed that um, in this conference, Crypto 21, there is another paper. Um, they propose another ring signature in the lattice space setting and they improved the previous result um, by quite a lot um, by reducing the constant terms in the lattice space construction. And we can see that um, 
they can even create a ring sanctuary of 1024 ring members, um, which is smaller than our construction. So um, when we compare our scheme with theirs, um, our scheme, the Latex Space LB, is still the softest one between a ring size of four and 452. And for the figure between um, 4,053 to 505, we do not have a actual figure in their paper, so we cannot compare. And for a ring size larger than 505, then um, their papers are better. So this is a rough, very rough comparison between our scheme and their scheme. But we also want to point out that one very important part of our point of our scheme is that the computation of our scheme is extremely fast. This is mainly because of the computation of our um, challenge ring is very simple, just a computation of a 256 bit string or numbers. So uh, the only slow part is the computation of the R ring. So the computation is extremely fast. And we compare with one of the um, fastest scheme in crypto 19, which has an implementation, so we can compare them. And in, when it was in the, in the same paper, uh, running in the same computer, um, we can see that um, the scheme can only run for a ring size up to 64, because the next parameter setting in their paper is a ring size of 1024, and we cannot run the, their scheme in a reasonable time. So we can see that um, their scheme is already very slow um, in 64, the ring size of 64. But our scheme is still practical for a ring size of maybe more than 200. So we can find, see that our scheme is extremely practical um, when it is implemented in a MacBook using private. To conclude, our paper actually proposed a generic construction of ring signature using a new dual ring structure following the classical ring approach, which is quite different from um, the papers in the last few years. Um, when it is instantiated in the discrete log base setting, it is the shortest one without using trusted setup. And in the lattice space setting, we give the shortest ring signature for a ring size between four to 500. And when it's implemented, our schemes uh, both in the DL base and the lattice space setting, they are both quite practical. So thank you um, for listening to our schemes. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. Thank you.